All right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, these are requests to myself, really. I'm not going to lie. These are selfish reactions because I just love them. Nukes. Nukes Top 5. Great channel. But yeah, Top 5 Ghost Videos. So scary, you'll be shook. And I miss... Shouted out last time that it was just Top 5s, but it's not. It's Nukes Top 5. And again, Nukes Top 5s have been there from the beginning. So you're always going to get actually new Ghost Videos. Um, yeah. I do love these, I'm not going to lie. Let's go. Viewer videos. This next clip was submitted by Nuke Stop by viewer Anna Garcia. It allegedly shows security footage of a ghost appearing around what locals claim is a haunted well in the small town of Orcos, Peru. A man seems to be sitting near the well, and then just seems to... Uh, well, I don't know actually what he does, but it's creepy as hell. But is this a ghost, yeah. or just the oddest camera glitch ever recorded? You decide. Or an alien. That looks very alien, doing all that type of jazz. Nuke's top five viewer Isaac says that his uncle recently experienced something he just can't explain. Checking his Nest security camera, he saw what appeared to be a dark figure just standing in the road outside his house. But this is where things take a truly disturbing turn. Oh, shit. I've got the orbs floating around him as well. Cars seem Roger, to pass right through this bizarre figure. So Isaac's uncle decides to go out to investigate. And things are about to get even weirder. Oh, shit. The dark figure seems to just disappear as the man approaches. So is this something supernatural watching his house? Or just what do you think this is? Let me know. That's mad! Twelve years ago, a band in Veracruz, Mexico was playing their final gig as one of their members was about to move to another town. At the time, they didn't notice anything unusual about the event at all. But later, as the guys rewatched the video of their performance, they noticed something that chills them to their core. For this one, there's probably no reason to ask, but did you see it? Lurking behind the TV in the right corner, a ghastly looking girl with what seems to be a... Looks almost like Joker. Why is so serious? Don't it look like Joker? She's digging the tunes now. They say that was in Mexico. Mexico and one in Peru. I'm sure that they are quite a um, ghost people. Um, I'm sure that there's loads of stories in Peru and Mexico. Mexico's got some mad ghost stories. And I'm pretty sure they are like that type of people too. They they believe in spirits and, and shit. But yeah, that's kind of, that is creepy. Hell and distorted face seems to be peeking out at the band. What's even weirder is that if we cut to different segments of the video, the strange pale girl has disappeared. The guys in the band believe that this bizarre figure might be the ghost of a friend of theirs who took her own life years earlier. 
perhaps dropping in for one last goodbye at the band's final performance. Jeez. A cry for help. D from the YouTube channel D's Dark Adventures travels to what is known to be the most haunted state park in Ohio, the Beaver Creek State Park in East Liverpool. The historic park is said to be a hot spot of ghostly sightings and even reports of mysterious creatures. It's already late and very dark when Dee walks deep into the woods of the park. She finds a spot to settle and begins to experiment with her EMF meter and a spirit box app on her phone. She plans to test whether the stories of supernatural activity in Beaver Creek State Park are true. It did not go well. Hopefully y'all can see me, I don't know. Ah, right myself. Anyway, I've got the EMF detector and I'm gonna, um, is that gonna help? I'm blinding myself. See if I can get anything to I interact with that. When I, my old one I used to have. My old one I used to have, I broke. So I'm gonna try to do that this time. I was not even on. <coughs> I wasn't even on the app. I don't know. That sounded like it could have been an animal. To be fair, and it, I'd be more concerned that that's a bear. I think you're not gonna eat this wandering snack. But the thing is, is she heard something. And the thing is, as well, if you go out to somewhere like this in the middle of the night, whether it's a haunted place or not, you're gonna hear things because you can't see. So that's already creepy, because as humans we rely on our sight. Um, so you already can't see that far around you, and so you focus in on things that in the day you would hear, but you'd never focus in on. It's only because it's at night and you can't see. Um, but then, yeah, it's either a bear or a bigfoot. Unless she gets more voice. What, how that came out of my freaking phone. A troubling sound startles Dee as it seems to come from right where she's sitting. What the? A little shaken up, Dee believes the sound might have come from the app on her phone. But she isn't sure and she is now freaked out. Dee decides to carefully trek back through the woods to her car and just leave. That's also another thing. I'm not respecting her gizmos if she's using a ghost finding app that could have just played that. Because I remember downloading a ghost finder and literally you see ghosts everywhere. And it's just yeah, so bullshit. But she, yeah, she looked freaked out. But what happens next makes her blood run cold. I don't know what to do, guys. I don't want to be in here. I wanted to make a good video for you guys, but I don't know what the heck made that noise. It sounds like a dang wild cat, like a big, big cat, but we don't have big cats here. Grizzly. I don't feel good in this place, guys. I really don't know what to do. I really go. don't know what, where to go. <laughs> It's not good. I think they're trying to lure me out. There's flashlights. I don't know if you guys can see them. I don't know what to do, guys. If I move, they're gonna hear me. Help me. Oh my God. 
<laughs> the voice of a man can be heard yelling for help, and he can see flash. I believe that she didn't set that up because she was making noises then. It's like if you ever seen the one of the when the girl, all her family goes on holiday, but the girl stays at home. And then she's like, walks around the house, she's like, my family's just gone out and I've just heard a bang upstairs. And then she stands at the bottom of the stairs and goes, if you're here to kill me, clap your hands. And then from upstairs you hear, and she runs out of the house. But as she's running, she makes this, <laughs> and it's like, them noises that you make, them involuntary noises you make when you are actually shit in your pants. And the, yeah, she made a couple of them noises, but that was mad, that last one, that was right next to her. There's a flashlight, I don't know if you guys can see them. I don't know what to do, guys, if I move, they're gonna hear me. Help me. <laughs> That's creepy. The voice of a man can be heard yelling for help and Dee can see flashlights in the distance. Alone and afraid, Dee doesn't trust the call for help at all. So she keeps her flashlight and hides in the darkness. Suddenly the voice can be heard right next to her and in terror she just makes a run for it. Later Dee says that she did make it home safe and to this day she says she still has no idea who could have been yelling for help out in the dark woods of Beaver Creek State Park at that time. Could it have been something paranormal or even scarier? Were those real people out in the middle of the dark woods stalking Dee and terrorizing her just for fun? Let me know what you think. How did they get close to her like that no, without making noise? So I was thinking at first, is it hunters? Maybe it's ghost of a hunter that had shot his mate or his mate had been attacked by something. Nala! No! Get on your bed! Oh shit. She's biting wires. But yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. We need scary videos, so if you see something that you think should be on Nukes Top 5, be sure to email us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. Project Fear After the unfortunate end of their popular TV series Destination Fear, team members Dakota, Chelsea, Tanner, and Alex are back on the Tanner, road to explore and investigate American extremely Tanner. haunted locations, this time on YouTube. With a new name, Project Fear, the team decides to go back to the old Sweet Springs Sanatorium in West Virginia, a place where three years ago they experienced things that to this day they still can't explain. Did you know that you have passed away? What? Did you hear that? That was like a woman like, Please tell me that was on the I have the chills. Did you know that you have passed away? What? 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 So it's like a whale. No, whale, a whale. <laughs> and a big dolphin. Did you hear any of it, Chelsea? This happened by a post in my yeah. room. So I looked back and I'm like, why is Tanner over here? I was like, ah! that was a scream. Tell me, dude, we need to get out of here. Dude, this is demonic. And I'm like, why is Tanner over here? I was like, ah! This location literally scarred me. So, a little backstory. Sweet Springs Sanatorium served as a hospital for tuberculosis patients in the 1940s. It is estimated that over a thousand people lost their lives inside the sanatorium walls. Many of these people were buried in unmarked graves behind the building. The sanatorium later served as a nursing home for the old and poor before eventually being shut down in the 1990s. Now, not surprisingly, with a history like that, the large estate is said to be extremely haunted. Visitors have reported hearing loud, unexplained voices and screaming, and many have witnessed doors slamming shut on their own. Even creepier, some visitors actually claim to have seen ghostly apparitions. 
most notably that of a woman dressed in white standing in the window on the third floor in room 3007. So after their visit three years ago, the Project Fear team is a little hesitant to return. And when they interview the current manager of the sanatorium, Cindy Harper, it just makes them even more nervous. So I have a question. So when doing the research, you talked about how you were like thrown down the stairs at yes. one point. I don't normally get pushed down the stairs. That's only happened one time, but it was bad enough. Like I told you, I had bruises. You were like thrown down. It wasn't like a couple of It was stairs. like the push. I, I mean, I actually, I was expecting to be a human attacking me and I, I found no one. So I drop all my equipment. I don't know what it looked like going down the stairs. <laughs> Just my oh life. My God. <laughs> okay. That was on the door, dude. That was the loudest knock. This is in the middle of the day still. That sounded like right next to my head. While interviewing Cindy about her terrifying experiences in the sanatorium, a loud bang on the floor startles both her and the Project Fear team. But there's no one inside the building. Cut to later that day. And as darkness falls, the team decides that in order to try to provoke a response. Thing is, you need to go like, hope. well, I wonder if they did do that in this. In the middle of the day, you need to go. You need more people than that because someone could move around. If you know the layout of the building, you could move around and hide from people that don't know the layout of the building. But that's what freaks me out more with these ghost things is that there actually could be real life nut jobs living in there. But this is again, this is a good one. Nuke has surpassed himself with these. Investigator Tanner should head down to the basement all by himself. The rest of the team explores the most haunted area of the sanatorium, the third floor. After hearing a few unexplained noises, Dakota, Chelsea, and Alex begin a digital recording session inside the most haunted room, room 3007. What happens next shocks the whole team, including Tanner, who's still completely alone in the basement. We were here several years ago exploring this building. Do you remember us? said, I remember Tanner. Oh, I hear that. It said, I remember Tanner. I didn't hear that. And yes, and then there's a pause. Yep. I, I remember something. It's Tanner. It says Tanner, dude. Let me play it again, just to verify. I don't know why I went like that and put my ear near it because I've got headphones on. It's not going to get no louder. But I don't know why you think it's going to be if you lean forward. But yeah, I did hear it that time. But then is it not like when you play records backwards and it says, I love Satan? It's like a lot of that, if, if you say that to someone, they will hear that, but it's not actually there. You can kind of implant things in people's heads because I didn't hear that the first time, but I did hear it the second time. I have the goosebumps, dude. It says yes. There's like a one second pause and then it's a whispering, I remember Tanner. <gasps> hey, Tanner. Go for Tanner. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to give you a warning. We were doing digital recorder. Thing is here. you. Why would they not say this poor mofo is in a basement of this creepy house or creepy hospital? Why wouldn't you do the friendly thing of saying, uh, Tana, can you come here please? rendezvous on the third floor um and then say the ghost remembers you by the way maybe stick with us now this poor mofo is in the basement by himself with eyes like that terrified the basement 
debating about even like telling you this, but like at the end of the day, like it's a warning. Like we want you to know to be on like your toes. What did I do? When we end up meeting with you in a little bit, I will show you the digital recorder, the EVP. It's freaky. Okay, man. Uh, what the? I heard something. Yo, are you okay? Can you do that again? What the f Sorry, sorry, I heard a voice, man. I promise if it's not us, dude. And we don't hear you right now on the third floor. So it's not like the echo or anything. I don't know what's happening, but let's go hit this part of the third floor and then we'll, then we'll go to Tanner. The team eventually finds Tanner in the sprawling sanatorium basement and they have him listen to what they captured on their digital recorder. We were here several years ago, exploring this building. Do you remember us? Oh, what do you hear? We didn't tell you what we heard yet. We remember Tanner. Yes! Dude! It says yes. I remember Tanner. Do you remember us? That is clear, dude. The Tanner is the creepiest part, because it's yes. so clear. Similar to what happened on their previous visit three years earlier, the Project Fear team finds themselves hearing clear voices, one of which seems to remember Tanner. The four friends then split up to sleep at separate haunted locations inside the building. Chelsea and Alex set up in the basement, Tanner on the second floor, and Dakota on the third floor, just outside haunted room 3007. It goes without saying that none of them slept a wink that night. All of them start to hear loud unexplained bangs and strange noises. But Dakota, up on the most haunted third floor, has a unique experience all his own, and it's downright chilling. Whoa! Hello? That sounded like a doorknob, like, rattling. I just heard you. Okay. I went down and explored to see if I could find, like, the source of that noise. I have no idea what it was. I looked in a bunch of rooms, but it, could, it literally could have came from any single door at any single- uh, What the f That was a girl's high-pitched voice. Hello? I just was down there too. I was just down there. It literally could have came from any single door at any single uh, What the f any single door at any single uh, What the f I'll tell you what. Can you do that again? He's definitely scared because he's quicker on the draw than Jesse James, my son. He's rapid with that. It makes sense to hear like a high-pitched female where I'm at right now with the lady in white on this floor. Yeah, that door is shut. This door, I just watched with my eyes, shut. I'll see it. That's the thing, it just goes everywhere. 
There is no one. A disturbing voice scares Dakota out of his seat and then a door at the end of the hallway closes by itself. Now, hundreds of commenters on the Project Fear YouTube channel believe that this door doesn't just close by itself. But look closely, and what do you think? What the f Holy f that door is shut! Yeah, I see it so first. Is the time. Sweet Spring Sanatorium haunted by something that's strong enough to speak, slam doors, and even appear as a shadow apparition? You decide. You can watch this entire two-part investigation with many more terrifying paranormal moments over on the YouTube channel, Project Fear. Imprints. Yeah, that one was mad too. These are good. These have been some good ghost things. Yeah, that one was mad. I would not do that. That's why I just sit here, watch, uh, sit here thinking when I watch these. I would not do this. Yeah, this is not a bit of me. I don't mind watching it. But yeah, nah, thank you. I'll be gone. As soon as that thing said, well, let's put it, that's the thing. People could legit be living in there and you never know, even though you're in there. Like, I looked after a mansion once and my sister cleaned it. Um, Literally, she could be hoovering at the other end of the house and I wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't wake me up. Uh, um, but in there, you open that door and then there's corridors there, there, there. Like someone could quite easily be living in that and just messing with you. And that's more scary than anything to me. There's just some nut job just chilling in there. You think, whatever are you up to, son? But yeah, two seconds. Be right back. Sorry about that. Let's carry on. This guy. For two years, Eric Gunner has been experiencing relentless paranormal activity. Even stranger, the ghost or entity seems to follow him wherever he goes as he moves from house to house in Mexico. But most terrifying again, of all, Toto. each time Eric tries to get away, <laughs> the spirit that follows him seems to become more and more aggressive. So, just like many nights in the past, Eric and his little dog Bean are woken up by the sound of loud banging on his bedroom door. This time Eric is prepared with a flashlight and a camera, intending to capture evidence of the hell that he's been living through. Eric's dog sniffs around and seems to be a little shaken up by something that Eric can't see. Eric decides to leave the little dog safe upstairs in his bedroom while he checks the house. Hay alguien aquí. Escuché como si me hablara. No sé si se alcanzó a escuchar una voz. Se lo juro que no sé si se alcanzó a escuchar una voz. Uy. Eric says he felt something blow on the back of his neck, and his camera actually captures the sound when it happens. Yeah. Oui. Yeah. Oui. Yeah. Oui. Eric has only been downstairs for six minutes when he suddenly notices something downright creepy. No, ma, no manches. What? Está viendo lo 
que yo. No. Y, 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 y no solo eso, ¿eh? Ahí en el... En el refri tenía una foto de mi mamá. Ahorita en el... No, bueno, no me fijé en el video. Pero pues antes de irme a dormir ahí la tenía. No está. Ni, ni tampoco está la cruz. Wow. ¿Qué pedo? A cross hanging on the living room wall and a photo that was hanging on the fridge only six minutes earlier are now mysteriously ah, gone. The cross. What makes this so creepy is that Eric has barely moved and has been standing in the same general area for the entire six minutes. No one could have snuck in and taken the cross and photo without being noticed or at least making a sound. But it's what happens next that is truly terrifying. Like hands press up against the glass windows and door. When Eric gets closer, a bizarre face emerges from the darkness. Eric has had enough. He runs back upstairs to his dog beans and doesn't sleep for the rest of the night. That's mad. Just under the surface. A group of fishermen in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico are returning home late one night when they spot something very strange beneath the water's surface. Underwater UFO. A strange bright blue light seems to be strobing in uneven bursts beneath the ocean waves. The guys head in for a closer look, and this is when things start to get really weird. Mira, empezó en el puente y está en la boya, mira la boya. El puente está a mano izquierda, a mano izquierda. Mira eso, mira eso, mira. Mira, 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 mira eso. Hay algo ahí. Mira algo ahí. You see someone swimming. Míralo. Yo no sé qué carajo es eso, dale para atrás. <laughs> I want to know. I don't want to know. Something dark and humanoid can be seen breaching the surface of the water and moving through the strange blue light. When the video was shared to the internet, many viewers' first thoughts were that it could simply be a diver. But others were quick to point out that there are no boats nearby. 
So where would a diver come from? And also the oddly shaped figure doesn't seem to be wearing a diving tank. Finally, the figure seems to swim upright, almost as if it is somehow walking quickly through the water. The bizarre clip went viral on the internet with many viewers suggesting that this humanoid figure could be anything from a creature to an alien or even a mermaid. But what do you think this is? Let me know down in the comments. Two years of terror. Over that one was two years. That one was good because you had the like. You always have that mate who wants to go and investigate things, and you're like, nah, bro, let's go. So I like that about that. You have one mate you going, oh yeah, what is it? let's just go and look closer, and one mate you going, nah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm quite happy not knowing what on earth that is. But yeah, that's mad. The sea, no, is a, uh, is a uh, yeah. When ninety percent of the sea, uh, um, unexplored or some some craziness like that. Lauren Combs from Waco, Texas, has been experiencing terrifying unexplained activity in and around her home. Yeah, I remember this one. After posting her videos, Lauren disappeared from social media for nine months before she finally returned with an update. Lauren says that over the last month, she's been feeling ill and drained of energy and having a very hard time. But strange things continue to happen around her home. One night as Lauren is on the phone with her boyfriend on her front porch, something happens that is truly bizarre. Hey, when are you coming over? I gotta wait for my work clothes to dry. When I'm coming. Hey, I'm hungry. I understand that. Hey, I'm not leaving out my work clothes. Okay, that's fair. Well, do you want me to just make something here? What do you have? I mean, and like, Pizzas or maybe chicken nuggets, nothing crazy. Can you bring your house? No, can you, can you bring your ranch? Can you bring mine? Dude, my fing door just closed. Is that the same sound? Yes, and it's locked. I just got locked out of my house. Yes, nobody's here. That's kind of scary. Where the door? Lara! Luna's inside by herself. I don't even see her in there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 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 What do you hang up for? So well, why do I like why do I want to sit and listen to silence while you go in the shop for ten minutes? Just hang up and ring me back. So shout out to that matey. See you won't pay no shit either. Lauren's front door suddenly slams shut, locking Lauren out of her home with her dog still somewhere inside all alone. Lauren panics and hurries around her house to get inside through her back door. As she enters, then that door suddenly slams shut as well, and her doorbell begins to ring over and over all by itself. Lauren says that she eventually found her dog mysteriously trapped in the back room. The dog was a little shaken up, but otherwise, he was completely fine. Now, cut to two months later. One night when Lauren is in bed, she is woken up by her dogs a little after midnight. What happens next is downright chilling. Sit, sit. 
That's it. Come here. Someone knocks on Lauren's window, but when she opens her window to look into her backyard, there's no one there. Then as she turns, she hears an odd growl near the open window that makes her scream. But I didn't hear the growl. did you see it? Right, right after Lauren screams and wildly pans her camera back towards the window, something odd can be seen right outside just below the windowsill, but only for a brief second. Who or what? is this after this incident lauren hasn't been back on tiktok but there is one important thing to be learned here and that is if someone or something pecks on your window in the middle of the night don't open it like why why would you for real <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, do it now and then also turn on all notifications so you never. Yeah. Yeah. I remember her videos before. <clears throat> yeah, that's mad. Nada would be fuming, like, if someone knocked on my window. Nada would do her head in. She don't even like the doorbell ringing. She goes mad. Bless her. But yeah. Yeah. It's kind of mad as well that she don't upload all the time. It's like months in between and that. That's when something happens. And that's mad. Someone knocking on your window. Would be mad for me because they'd have to be on a ladder. Um, but yeah, this was a good, good little selection of ghost videos. I have to say, that was fire. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.